Good morning. These two cows behind me and another three that have just been loaded into a trailer head along the road to yard one where the vet's coming to scan them. They were scanned empty. We've been fattening them up. I just want to scan them again just to check before they go to the abattoir. Right, ready for them? Go on. Go on. Go on. <laughs> Load number two. I'm just cleaning my boots. So we've got five cows as well as two calves. Also need scanned for a BVD, not scanned, a blood test for a BVD. We usually do tissue tags in the lugs, but those two, uh, the tissue sample didn't work. So two blood samples and then we're good to go. All just worked out fine. It's eight o'clock now. Everything's done and dusted. Vet arrives at nine. Come on in. I'm reading a gate. So an expensive gate, which is this machine. Whoa, bit of a churly start. One big expensive gate over there. Another expensive gate over there. We've got all we need in here. Two calves, five cows. Just need these three hound cows, which are going to be a bit trickier. They're less important if we don't manage to get them in. These cows, if they're scanned empty, three of them are heading off to the abattoir today, two next week, whereas the Highlanders, they're either up the duff or they're not up the duff. The Highlanders are not playing ball. It doesn't help that the ground's really hard because this corner is quite a wet corner. It's kind of full of icy chunks and they don't like it on their feet. Here you go, here you go. She's a bit white. She's having a good scratch. Anyway, she's actually missing a tag, so Dad's got a spare up in the office. We'll get her tag. So she was scanned in calf, but I saw her bullying in the shed a month ago. So we'll get her scanned as well. She lost a flipping tag. You can see where it used to be. The hole in the lug. See the hole there? A finger in the back. Of it. There you go, new tag, good beast. Just to get scanned and then she's done. Hopefully she's still in calf like she was scanned originally. Smashing up this ice so we can run them straight, straight out of here and straight out that gate. Cause that's lethal. There's no point trying to even get them close to that. But even at this, it's too slippy. So we're just gonna reverse them out of the crush. It'll be slower, but it'll save them. Splitting their legs either way and injuring themselves. The vets are here scanning. They've got a student here today, so I don't want to film them put the pressure on. Just them learning, so leave them to it. But the first cow that should have been in calf is in calf, so it's back in. Happy days. It's a very distinct structure. You're right, pal. Someone's got their hand up your backside. There we go, the last two. Dad took the other three in earlier. That's those five empty cows dropped off at the abattoir. And some shiny machines. There's Dad. There's some more shiny machines, a combine. Why are we at sellers? Have a guess. Okay, last bit left. Shift these two calves along the road back to where they came from. I put my phone down there to film. Anyway, it didn't film. Calves are both in there now. So it's almost 12 o'clock. We started at about half seven or so. Four and a half hours to scan five cows, blood test two calves, and take five cows to the abattoir. Things were at the wrong yard to where the crush is or handling system. So. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we sort out a new shed, handling at the same place. We can cut loads of time out every time we handle cattle. So the two that are getting their BVD samples, blood samples. This was a single that was through there next to the cows. We put it into this batch now, and then these lot can all come back in. High tech, bail spike. Nice bit of mold got into this bale. It's frozen. Come along to yard four, you don't see this yard too often. We'll let out a bit of space here for a company to store logs. I'll grab a few bags for Kev. This is the field we're in. Ignore the big huge puddle. We were a little bit concerned it was going to thaw out too much and it was just going to make a hell of a mess, but 
it's actually come up fairly well. This is right next to a big lake. It's not really made any mess. It's just hard enough to travel. Oh, what a horrible mess. Uh, anyway, there's a the cave over there. See, he's travelled up and down here and you'd hardly know it. There's a wee bit of a hollow in this field and all through here we could do with running a drain. You can see it just runs all the way down there. It looks soaking wet, this field, but it's actually quite dry. This is just a layer of ice that hasn't defrosted. See there, there's no water in there. It's all drained away. Just a layer of ice. You can see where Kev's come through. He's avoided going through there. There's a, a wee touch of wind, but we're not spreading at 36, we're spreading at 24 metres. It's not 20-30, which is relatively heavy stuff compared to urea, so it's fine. Close my eyes. This patch from about the tractor along to the one to the third telegraph pole, that whole chunk used to be set aside for about 10 years. So it was just soaking in there. We did have a lot of drainage two years ago in there. Now it comes up a good drop. There's just a lot of weeds in there to deal with for the next couple of years. Some of the good stuff. We'll load this up, that field's done. Um, I'll just come and see how he was getting on, how the field was looking. Then I'm gonna nip off with a trailer. I've got two pallets to pick up. Two pallets of pallet racking. I need to go and pick up two that are left at Tully Barden so many I didn't get yesterday. Smashing. Job done. Kev's gonna keep firing away at that. Off he goes. The fence suits that uh, spreader on the back. Same colour. You compare this not 2030 to that which is 10, 15, 21. A lot smaller bags with the same weight, 600 kilo bags which makes it more suitable to spread in slightly windier conditions. You then step up again to your reel, which is even bulkier than that. Needing to make a bag out of a fur bag, I'll get my pen knife out. Yep. Sulfur nitrogen bags. Polysulfate. Tiny. Little stout wee things. It's like cement. It's like a bag of cement. Sulfur nitrogen. Polysulfate, not 2030, 15, 10, 21. There's no urea here. Next stop, Tully Barton Smitty. That not 2030 is going on at 210 kilos a hectare. Load number two, we're back again at Tully Barton. Seems to be here quite often in the last month. Anyway, there's a vent in the yard picking up a trailer. I think the boy's having trouble with it. Trouble with a vent? No, never. Baxter, come on Baxter. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Sit. Sit. Good boy. Oh, you got a fright there. Oh, that's a big drop for you, big man. You gonna go for it? We bit oversized these straps. Pure radio at it again. We'll get these pallets off and I've just had a phone call from a man from t Parry. t Parry produce handling systems. I've not actually seen much of a kit other than what Cami Sheep Game has shown on his channel. So his sheep handling is a t Parry system. Um, I think they just lent him it for a year. Do t Parry want to lend me a handling system forever? It'd be nice. It's all produced and manufactured in New Zealand and shipped over. So I'm just going to nip round to their office, depot, whatever you call it. Um, just to see what they've got to say, see what the kit's like. I've actually never seen their cattle handling systems in action before. We've made it. Right, to Parry. They're actually mega close to us. I didn't even realize they were here. They've been here for a while. Anyway, this is a classic. Um, they did show us there was another couple around there. This is a classic, this is kind of more what we'd be suited to. It's all quite nice. New Zealand built machine. Your head yoke, it's controlled by this lever here. You can do it up there as well. There's a vet gate here. This bottom gate separates from the top one as well. So the likes of not wanting a vet or yourself to get a boot, get kicked in the shins when you're at a cow here. Everything's got a uh, plastic insert. So there's not too much rattling. The noise levels are really low. This is a squeeze crush actually. So squeezes right the way in and then it's, it locks via this 
locking product which has got a lifetime guarantee on it actually. The boy explained it much like a silicon gun, the ratchet system where it can't, can't release unless I want to release it, which is really easy. Split gates up here, one that also joins on to the bottom one if you want. You lift that up, so then it's all one big gate. The likes of if you've got a cow that goes down that's in calf in there, open the gate, jobs are good in. Um, EID reader, probably not been in that ourselves. But split gate up here, one and two. The same access from the other side. It's got really heavy duty rubber floor to it. So it's comfy for the cattle and it's got good grip so they're not slipping and skating about. There's a lot of features to this. He's just been through it all with me. Um, He's trying to sell me this one specifically because they've changed their branding and they've put a discount on anything that's got old branding on it. Sliding gate at the back. Not cheap crushes. They're built to last. New Zealand built. They're hot dipped out in New Zealand. The boy was explaining that dull galvanizing is much better quality than shiny. Shiny has more zinc in it and that's a cheaper product. Maybe that's just sales patter, I don't know. But they do get a good rep. I've seen them online. They do get a good reputation of Tapari stuff. Hard wearing. What do you think? Tapered head yoke there uh, with round stock. So less times you're going to need to use um, the head yoke because um, naturally they can't move up and down too much from there. But the head yoke, which isn't actually attached right now. Is it? Yeah, the bottom bit's not attached on the head yoke right now. But if that was fully there, basically that's a, a lever that comes down from the top and a scoop that comes down from the bottom and kind of pinches the head so they can't rattle about. Yeah, it's a good piece of kit. It's well built, it's heavy built. What kind of stock, what kind of thickness of stock is that? Three mil? I think that's three mil box there around that outside frame. You would have thought that might be capped, but if it's galvanized, I guess, through the middle, it wouldn't need it. So if you split these gates like that, and that one, you take that pin out of there. Yeah, that's a split gate, so the likes of the vet can shut that, open this, and they can come in here, and then they've got access to the back end of the cow without getting kicked in the shins. It's a very simple thing, but it's not a, a yank of a lever there, it's just you fold that up, and it's on a cam action um, spring-loaded mechanism there, so it just pulls like that. Job done. Very simple thing that, and you wouldn't think much of it, but to quickly open a gate, you're just bang, you're in. It's the little features that are quite nice, rather than yank, slam it open, slam it shut. Anyway. If anyone else has got one of these Tapari systems, let me know. They were showing us the full race system. I'll show you the brochure, but I don't think that's really suited to us too much. It's more for guys who are doing big, big, big volumes, I think. Last one to look at is this one, they're Titan. I think they've actually discontinued this range. This is fully manual. And I think this range is now only like fully automated, like hydraulic. Um, so this is like a wee cubby box that cover goes over and you get your way, your way screen in there and this is all on way cells but this compared to the last one I just showed you the classic it's got an extra bit in here which is an injection bit how do you open and close that I've lost the lever oh there you go there you go so that's like access to get in to inject the neck or you guys who are doing TB tests very similar crush except it's got the injection bit it's got the head yoke on the bottom there to lift the chin up a bit and a couple of other features but much the same this has got a slightly quicker back door it's a double acting so from both sides so obviously the door effectively is traveling half the distance so it's a bit quicker anyway a nice wee thing to look at people's opinions put them down below